You have to understand how things are. See, right see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what I wanted to learn as you grow podcast to do. I wanted uh, to get to listen to it and think and learn as we listen and learn as we grow. Um, I spoke with Jabari 911, my man, my man um, Evolite, and uh, both of them said the same thing, like just of kicking it for them um, three hours for the whole podcast and um, and then going back over it um, I can say for myself firsthand that I learned so much um, whether it be about recording um, the podcast whether it be about um, having guests on the podcast and you know I'm gonna break everything down but it was just an amazing episode um, and you know I gotta thank my homie from Japan um, Sawalu O-N- S O W E L U dot O O dot I N A. Um, she's the one that put me down with Jabari 9 11. And um, it was probably about four hours before um, it was time to record. And um, I only had about two hours to listen to whatever he had going on and uh, decide whether or not uh, if he was the right candidate for uh, to put on the podcast. And uh, sure enough, after listening, you know, um, it was crazy because... Uh, I listened to one song, and uh, it was more of a, I guess, maybe, should I say, like, alternative uh, type R&B style. I don't even know what to call it, but he was singing on that, and uh, then I heard another song where he had bars, and he killed it on some spitting bars and then I heard another song where it was a whole different type of genre that I don't even know what to call it and I knew from there like yeah I gotta get I gotta get this kid on the um, podcast and um come to find out right away that uh Jabari grew up in a church, um, you know, and um, he learned music through the church. Um, if you listen, you you would know that um, he said that, you know, the church is what um, influenced him to do music at first. And, uh, you know, the only things that he really ever listened to musically was church music and uh, he said that you know that being in the church um, helped him you know um, grow and you know learn from being there as far as learning how to play every musical instrument and uh his homie, um, Evola, was right there, you know, to back that up. Like, yo, you give Jabari any instrument and he knows what to do with it. And, um, you know, 
I definitely applaud um, whatever church, you know, he came up in, you know, for um, giving him his music ability because, um, pardon me, his music ability because, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely one of a kind. And, um, but besides that, he never even heard his first hip hop song until he was in high school. So he went up, he was about fifteen. And his first hip hop song that he heard was Kanye West. Um, Devil in the Red Dress. One of my favorite songs ever. So from there as we we were doing um the episode, as soon as he told me that, it was just like, damn, that's that's one of my Go to tracks for you know, just that beat is just crazy. You know the way Rick Ross came on is just he killed it, and um, you know everything Ye was talking about on that song. You know every man went through. So um, yeah, he told me that his homie let him borrow that album, and um, which was um. My Twisted, Dark, Beautiful Fantasy, whatever. That Kanye West album. That classic. And uh, the one he made in Hawaii when um, he allegedly broke up with Amber Rose. And he was going through all that. And he was flying producers out and writers out and just had a squad out in Miami. And, um, you know, probably on Def Jam's budget. And uh, from there, they made songs like um, Monster featuring um, Nicki, Jay-Z, Rick Ross, and um, just just several songs. I remember when that album came out, like it was... um yesterday because it was when I moved back to Philadelphia um, from New Jersey after um, MySpace, you know, um, fell off and um, it was around 2010 and uh, MySpace was like completely done. It was a wrap, um, you know. It was holding on for a second, but then it was it came to a point where like Facebook came and um, took it over. Pardon me, that's the squeaky ass chair, I man. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things we talked about um, in this episode was that you can't depend on a platform to be the ones that hold all the information to all your fans. If you're depending on Facebook or uh, just any platform, period, whether it be a music platform, anything, um, then you, you're really slipping. Um, you need to be getting every, every single person that uh, you come across. You need to be getting that uh, email address. Um, anybody you do business with, get their email address. Um, this way you got a direct link to them at any given time, you know, and, uh, you know. That's something that I told Jabari um, and my man Aid that happened to me back in the MySpace days. Um, you know, I had two MySpace sites. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was um.
I forget exactly exactly the year. It was probably like oh seven, oh eight. Um and I had just came home from from prison and um what was I? It was it was 07, 08. I was twenty two, twenty three years old. I had just came home from Annadale, uh, Mountain View Correctional Facility in uh in New Jersey and I went out to uh, Belcoville, a small town right outside of uh, Atlantic City, probably like probably like forty five minutes outside Atlantic City, and uh, not even like a half hour. And uh, it's all Atlantic County, but in Belcoville, the uh, state police patrol. Um, that little spot, um, and the police barracks was about 45 minutes away from Belcoville. So the sun went down. It's, it was going to take a minute for the state troopers to get there because they're usually on the expressway on, um, Atlantic City. Expressway just, you know, pulling people from Philly over, like, like they did me in um, October, but my lawyer, you know, told me not to speak on that. I mean, he ain't gonna bring up my lawyer's name and all that because, you know, that's nothing to be proud of that, you know, I paid so much for um, an expensive lawyer. It's, it's nothing at all to be proud of, um, you know. I'm still fighting the case, and uh, I ain't going to bring up the charges because, uh, well, you know, basically it was um, possession with intent to um, distribute, and I'm going to just say um, I'm not guilty, that's all, but anyway, um, not mostly, not at all. Um, yeah, shout out to um, my homie that um, introduced us because, like, we got it into it. Like, um, I started asking him how he felt hip hip hop may have um, influenced him in a negative way. After that, um, you know, after he listened to hip hop, because like I said, he was in high school when he listened to hip hop. Before that, he was in church all of his life. So um, I noticed that he was, um, you know, spitting bars and, and, and singing about um, drug use and, and and you know being in them situations. So it was only right that I, you know, had to add some in. You know, he um spoke up like a man. He he admitted to trying some things, and um he said he pushed the brakes on it. You know, ASAP. As soon as he realized it, it, it even could be a problem. Um, he pushed the brakes on it, and um I respect him for that. Um, so. With that being said, um, what else we learned from that? Oh, they put me on some stuff, you know, to put the albums out a month before, just to, you know, make sure people know the exact date, you know, you know, um, just give them a roundabout, because when you give them an exact date, if it don't line up right, on that exact date, cause uh, as we were talking about, just with Spotify and putting albums out on um, you know, all these different platforms, with this um uh, new distribution deal I got um for the next year and uh, through B Stars and um, uh, you know, 
they were talking, we were talking about how petty it is, you know, as far as I want to make my tracks, um, titles be your type beat, track one, your type beat, track two, cause I've been saying that your type beat shit, you know, and, um, I see other producers trying to jump on it now, you know, and they might even have a bigger name than me. So, you know, you jumping on it, that's cool. As long as I know I was the first one with it, you know what I mean? It's like clothing. And um, so just give your fans a roundabout of when you're going to drop, just so you don't look crazy. So, um, and what else I learned? I learned to stop saying bull and John and nah I mean so much. And um, that's something big that I've been wor- working on. And it's just nobody's trying to listen to somebody speak and just keep on hearing them say, yo, the boy was with that. Because not everybody's from Philly. Not everybody gets that slang. And um, so I realized that I got to cut back on that. And um, because they were from Florida, Broward County, um, the home of Ace Hood. And um, so they didn't really understand what I was saying when I'm saying the ball and the John and, you know, know what I mean? Like, they don't know. So um, I just had a whole different slang. And um, I thought that that's why you never, you know, judge a book even by it's, it's the lyrics or the uh, music because listening to uh, to the bars, I would have thought that, you know, I would have never thought that Jabari sounded like that when he talked. And, uh, you know, that's just how it is these days. Um, back in the day, usually, like, However, uh, not however exactly you spit, but like your voice was like, you know, comparable to what um, it sounded like on your song. It wasn't like all auto-tuned up and like you can't even, you know, tell it's the same person. It wasn't like that. So um, I noticed that that, um, that's a big difference that... um, went down from my generation to the generation because at the beginning of the interview like we compared um my generation to the generation and what we had to do to um you know to get into the studio and uh, you know put our mixtapes out and all that and it was just way different back then and what, what we had to do to get the instrumentals and to get on these beats and to get uh, DJs to actually play these records, it was it was just way different back then. It wasn't no um, you just uploading something and and posting it and getting your people to post it and you're gonna blow up. Nah, it wasn't like that. Also, I learned um, it's just I learned a lot of stuff about podcasting. Um, I learned not to cut off my guests. Um, let them speak, because I'm going to always have my time to uh, speak, because this is my podcast, so, like, while the guests are there, let them get their thoughts out, and uh, as long as um, they're keeping the um, podcast positive and um, it don't get off track from learning and growing, as well as teaching, and knowledge and um, wisdom and understanding and um, it's all about love, peace, happiness, freedom, justice, and equality. Um, that's that's pretty much all I can ask for. Is that you, you know you just keep it on topic. We're learning and we're growing. We ain't with the nut shit like part of my language, we ain't with the nut stuff, like, 
everybody else can keep all that. Uh, what about building a billion dollar business from the straight hood? And like, I don't know if y'all hear, like, I'm in the, I'm from the straight hood. Like, it just is what it is. And, um, so, you, you know, um, what else? Oh, I learned. You got to have a team in this game. Um, you got to have a team that you can trust. And, um, what else? A team that, um, excuse me, a team that, um, a team who you can work with and get and get shit done with. Having a team that you know is um, ready, willing, to, ready and willing to do whatever to help the company and um, and when they when they're there to help the company during them long hours, you know, when you know um, an album might be dropping and something got to be mixed. Right then, right away, and you know, tracks got to get uploaded on the ASCAP, and um, just everything got to just get uploaded right away, and um, you just need extra people there, and you need you just need them extra laptops to be working for you. Um, they're the people that you need around you. That's that's going to be ready to ground it out, knowing. That um, you know, you put your blood, sweat, and tears in this, you know, album. So they're gonna help you do the same thing. And if they're your team and you come up, they're gonna get rewarded. It's like that, man. And uh, it's it's pretty much as simple as that. And if you got a team that ain't on that type of time, then you already know. You got to let them go. Uh, you got to let them know that you ain't got time for the friendship stuff. This is business. That's why, you know, it's it's not always good to um, mix friendship and business, but them two, Jabari and E, they, um, they both had a... You know, a chance to grow up together and um, turn the friendship into a business, and um, they somehow make it work. But today, um, today's the age group group definitely. Um, it's just different. There's there's a lot of differences between now and then. Um, like today, just because you spit it, don't mean you have to live it. And, like, that's what I'm learning, especially through this internet shit. It's, like, back when when I was rapping, like, when you spit it, you actually had to live it. Like, if you were going to come out on some backpack stuff, like, you better just come out on some backpack stuff. And back then, it wasn't even, like, if, especially coming up in Philly, like, if you wanted to battle and stuff like that, it was hard to be, um... Uh, MC like exactly like um Black Thought and come out with um songs like that when he was flown with the the roots and all that it was hard to do that you had to be a battle rapper you know what else um oh yeah we talked about um how today's younger kids um uh, Get into the stock market real young. And uh, we talked about how that's a great thing. And um, we probably talked about stocks, Bitcoin and all that. We probably talked about that for about a half hour. Um, we talked about the difference between long-term and short-term goals on the stock market. Um, you know, they kept up. They knew everything I was talking about. We were teaching each other. We were learning as we grow. And if you listen to that podcast, then you're going to learn. And you're going to listen. And you're going to hear 
exactly what it is that we learn. So, um, everybody getting these vaccines all early and all. Just, just be mindful that, you know, they have side effects and that, um, you know, I, prayers going out to my people out in um, Peru who got the vaccine shot. And, uh, you know, she said she wasn't feeling too good. And I haven't heard from her since. So, shout out to her. Prayers out to her. I hope everything's going good. And, uh, you know, I know she did get the vaccine out in Peru. And it was a Chinese vaccine. So. It's um, it's crazy, man. The world is it's it's a lot of crazy stuff. Cause with these side effects and with these medicines, they're telling you right on there, like you're not gonna be able to sue nobody. You're not gonna be able to have a lawsuit, cause you're taking it at your own will. They don't even know the side effects, so they're saying it right there, like we don't know the side effects, so we can't even tell you whether or not it's gonna have a side effect on you. So, I would really, really, really be cautious. Um, Moderna um, is one of the makers of the vaccines that's given that's given out in America, uh, and they're backed by government money. Um, wow, the other two, Johnson and Johnson, and what's the other one, Merck? Um, they're not backed by government money. So, um, that's just something to pay attention to. Um, cause the government always wants to get their money back, um, uh, when they put in some money to a company and they, um, uh, they hurry up and get their, their vaccine passed through, you know, they're always looking, looking to get their money. And it was a little bit weird. They let Merck's vaccine go through a whole weekend before. And then, you know, they came out on that Monday with it. So it's just real weird, you know. They might have been missing one or two things. I might have seen what, what Merck had in, in, in their thing. And then, bang, just put it in there. You never know. I'm speculating. This is all speculation right here. But we were, we were basically teaching each other to be open um, on the situation and, and to um, focus on the vaccine that you are getting. And don't just go in there taking a vaccine just because your job told you to go get a vaccine or just because this person told you to go get a vaccine. Um, really... Do your research on it before you go do that because a lot of young people are just falling victim and just going right in line and just being told a bunch of things on the news and a lot of this stuff. You got to really research for yourself and see if it's true or not because the news, believe it or not, has an agenda. They have, um, that they have people that advertise with them and spend millions of dollars a year to spend advertisements on their TV shows. So you always see them pharmaceutical companies saying that they got this right during the news. So you think the news is ever going to say anything bad about anything that you're doing? Nah. Negative. Would you? Would you give up them millions like that and say something negative about them? Let's just be honest. So, um, yeah, I learned that looking back at the um, episode and uh, what else? Oh, yeah, um, my man Jabari said something that struck home. He said, um, oh, so back in the day, um, you weren't able to be yourself and be vulnerable in your music and it was like a question to head home because it was like damn were we able to be vulnerable and um I told him nah but that was a lie because now that I go back it was plenty tracks 
from back in the day where um, people was vulnerable on tracks, but in a different way, in um, in maybe a hood way, like plenty of um, state property tracks, like Oskino, um, you've been down too long, and um, Beanie C, um, what's your life like, and um, all them songs like that, where they were vulnerable in them songs, and um, they were still hard. And they were still real, and they were still true to themselves at the end of the day. And um, the last thing I'm gonna speak on again is um, not depending on YouTube to uh, keep your uh, subscribers for you. Um, not depending on SoundCloud. To keep your um, subscribers for you, um, not to depend on none of them. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, none of that. Because you've seen what happened to MySpace. It can happen to any one of them at any given time where it just falls off the bang. And now you're stuck with 100,000 people that don't even go on there no more. It happened to a lot of people during the MySpace days. And a lot of stuff um, repeats it tw- itself every, every uh, 12 years. So I just want you to be, you know, informed of that. So, you know, you got to learn as you grow. So on that note, I'm out. Uh, I got some more of this insane OG. Courtesy of my man. You know, <laughs> I'm out.